guys um, welcome to Eric's workshop today is a different day a very beautiful day um, please those out there who are not taking the COVID-19 protocols um, serious please do because um, as the government has put in a containment strategy we all have to abide by the protocols wash your hands sanitize use your mask and let's curb this dangerous virus. Um, today we have in our mess a very special guest. I won't say anything about him. He's going to introduce himself. And we have a very interesting political um, discussion today, which obviously, you know, well in Ghana, we are just close to the election day. So every party in Ghana is campaigning um hard so that people will vote for them so we we've started a series that is political um, agenda um and it's going to be ongoing for a number of weeks so stay tuned and um check in your comments subscribe and then um, bring in your comments as we flow along um Hello, Mr. I won't mention your name, but I want you to introduce yourself to the viewers. Um, who are you, what you represent, what you do, so that people know the kind of special guest I've got today. Thank you. Okay. Can you give us? Thank you, uh, Mr. Ray Kukudoko, for having me. My name is Charles Benikusi. Um, I'm born in the UK. Um, I was in Ghana at a very young age. Um, I attended Datus Preparatory Primary School in Tema, Community 7, okay. and then subsequently to Opokwa International in Asukwa. Tema boy! <laughs> <laughs> then also to Kumasi Academy. Um, I developed a special interest in economics when I was in Kumasi Academy. Um, and so later on, returned to the UK at the age of 1920, about. And then I studied economics at Berbeck. University of London. I, from there, I worked in a Ghana International Bank in Cheapside. Um, some of my mates, uh, my seniors, uh, Mr. Ray Sowa, uh, Mr. Samuel Boyson, Festus uh, Mensa. Um, and so, subsequently, I entered into the United Kingdom, the investment banks in, in the UK. So, I worked for RBS Trust. Okay. Um, all in the Treasury uh, Department. Um, we were then subsequently bought by um, Bank of New York. Okay. So then I was working also in the Treasury as, as a Treasury Manager wow. um, in Bank of New York in Canary Wharf. Um, later on, I decided that I wanted to have a, a broader perspective of life. So I had to I resign, you know, obviously at my own expense uh, to enter into business. And um, so I got into interiors. Um, I have since, um, I've also lived in Antwerp for about three years, so I speak Dutch. Um, and now, obviously, in Ghana, there are issues going on. And I think that sometimes with the wealth of experience and knowledge, uh, we can also uh, put in our input, uh, all in supporting the building of that nation, Ghana, mm -hmm. and also to the improvement of the lives of the people. Okay. So that is what I'm about. Yeah, um, thank you for your explicit introduction. And um, I'm hoping that viewers out there will enjoy this program as we go along. It's a very special guest in my midst. Um, today, we want to touch on the leadership of our country Ghana. Um, we will be deliberating on how you know elections are done and we will be touching base on how our leaders come in with a very you know unique mindset of trying to help the country and then somewhere along the line things go um, patient. So we'll be dealing um, with the leadership of Ghana. Um, my question to you, Mr. Charles Kusi, um, I just want to tell the viewers what you think about the leadership of our country, Ghana. Okay. 
Absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Eric. Um, leadership. So when we talk about leadership, it is very important for every viewer to have that clearer understanding that people come into politics uh, not for money because we have that general perception yeah. that uh, people always come into politics um, obviously to amass, amass personal wealth yeah. for themselves and for their family. It's not always the case. Um, yeah. That is not the case. Mm -hmm. um, people come into politics uh, with that desire for the development of a nation and obviously Ghana as a nation and also for the improvement <coughs> of the life of the people of Ghana. This is the main uh, uh, passion mm -hmm. that drives leaders into politics. Mm -hmm. And what we are uh, probably realizing is that at the end of the tenure, mm -hmm. we get to realize that uh, the, that vision changes to something else. And so generally what you are finding is that um, you are finding that after so many years uh, in office, there is a deviation from that original intention of development okay. of the nation. And, and, and this, this is the sort of thing that today we are here to talk about, to find out what is causing that problem. And before, before we jump into that area, I just wanted to tell viewers, what do you think a good quality um, characteristics of a leader should be? Right. You know, as before we, we get into that area. Good, good. So, you know, as a good leader, number one, leading a nation, you need to be a visionary. So a visionary is... A sort of a person that can bring something that is not in existence into being because if you're there to transform people's lives you need to be a visionary you need to see something that people are not seeing something that can help them to grow and um, you also need to be a very tolerant person uh, the reason is that when you're dealing with masses of people you know people do have their own opinion you know you may have probably an opinion that you think is the best or the correct one but other people also do have an opinion mm -hmm. so you need to have that uh, spirit of tolerance so um, first visionary you need to be a visionary and second tolerance that's right. so um let me put it this way we have temperance, that is the extreme nature of patience. But tolerance is a bit of a um, technical um, word into the description of leadership. So let me carry on and let's see what happens. And, and, and as much as you, you need to have these two qualities, you also need to be a disciplined leader. So when I talk about discipline, we're talking about when you say you're doing something, you need to stick to the course. And this is also very important uh, because as you know, when you're running a nation, you, you, you're going to have an idea and you need to stay with it. You need to pursue that idea and you need to be strong. You need to be strong as well in pursuing this idea so that when a task if you have a particular task and it's assigned to uh, you know a group of people to, to conduct they need to know that you are a serious person and and that you're going to see through this task to be completed so that is also very important then also we need to you also need to be a person that will be willing to also delegate in the sense that it's, it's a big task mm -hmm. you know operating a nation and just to give you an idea if you're running a family yeah. <laughs> even a small family you realize the challenges that you know you can face so selecting good people and delegating powers mm -hmm. it's also an important aspect of a, a good leader and you know there are delegation skills as well you need to 
fish out the most important qualities that you want, especially when you are trying to give them specific tasks, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. You need to know who, um, who is good in what. The selection. Process. So the selection process is very important. You need to know who is good in what, so that you can assign that particular person with that particular task. Correct. Yeah. So what, what what do you think, or do you, do you want to carry on a little bit before I ask you the next question? Um, I mean, it's fine. Um, in terms of leadership, yeah, running a